And this was the day after we dived the Guernsey coast, and it was still a lovely flat sea, although you can see there was an odd cloud in the sky. But we had fantastic visibility, and everyone had a great dive. There's a quick shot of Nick going down the shot line, and then you can see Paul in the distance, and Charles. And the wreck stood up really well, and uh, this is one of the first videos I've managed to use uh, Kev's head cam as well as myself to edit them together to make this video. And this is a photograph I pulled off the internet of the Nuremberg. And this is the bow guns. And you can see the two capstan winches there where the deck has rotted down and the guns are now collapsed and lying on their side. These would have been our main armament and she did actually have 10 of these which are 105mm guns and she did have eight 52mm guns plus two torpedo tubes. Her deck armour would have been between 63mm and 13mm and her guns would have been armoured with 51mm plate. She was powered by two triple expansion engines uh, of 1320 horsepower each and she could reach a maximum speed of 23.4 knots. She had a crew of 322. She had a displacement of 3,390 tonnes and she was 43 foot on the beam and 378 foot long. This is actually Nuremberg 2 as Nuremberg 1 was sunk in the Battle of the Falklands. And this one was sunk by the Repulse in 1922 after uh, being salvaged from Scarpa flow and used as target practice so there's no loss of life and it's safe to salvage bits and pieces off this wreck although these portals turned out to be very low quality and they were made of steel but what a lovely shot Kev got of sending them up and here's Rob and Dave both on the kisses we had one cancellation on Saturday and Tom doesn't look pleased to be down there at all and he immediately found a porthole but he way it was of low quality and wasn't interested. The wreck looks really well broken up but there's lots of things here which just aren't in normal shipwrecks you know there's a lot more armour plate and heating systems and cooling systems and god knows what and what is this in the middle is this the helm or some kind of backup helm but it certainly looks um, like it's a steering wheel to me um, although it's again it's not made of brass or anything like that so it's, um, but it's a quite a significant feature in the middle of the wreck I think this would be another one of these 105mm uh, guns not massive but um, she wasn't really designed to take on battleships And this is Charles from Mumbai, and this is the first time I've used Kev's footage, so I'm actually in the video, and that is me coming along there. And that is what I'm looking through my camera, seeing Kev filming me, and he's explaining he's found two portholes. And I've just got a little bit of a cross current here, so uh, I want to get to the bow. But anyway, at least I'm in my own films. You can see my camera on my head there, and that is my new kiss and this is only my third dive on it and it seems to be working very well and then we have some nice shots of the props from Kev you get to know by looks of these props that they are meant to be fast turning props and this was quite a fast ship I should imagine. 24 knots was quite some speed in World War One. Chris and Tom and uh, they're just on their way up. They're only doing uh, a short dive. It's uh, actually Tom's first deep dive on his rebreather and uh, I know he uh, took a bit of flack 
for uh, diving before he was really uh, up to up to the experience level that he should have had. But with this visibility, I don't think anyone would uh, blame him for coming along. And he had the perfect buddy, Chris, who'd recently done his course. And, uh, you know, everyone had a great weekend. Thanks very much to Trevor. I look forward to coming on his new boat once they've fixed the hole in my heart.